Hello everyone, very very good afternoon to all the viewers of The Legal Game. This is Kushal Goyal, your educator for the CLAT examination. So as we tread closer to the mid of the month and the middle of the parliament session, we have a lot of stormy things to discuss. A book by the former CGI uh, announcement of an uh, Indian lady being one of the most beautiful ones across the globe and among other things of foreign policy. We also know that a brewing cold war is now happening and is being played out in almost every sphere of the world affairs. That is the conflict that is brewing between US and China. And in today's segment, we are also going to discuss an editorial related to the same. So with that, let's dive in on the newspaper. On the front page, we have the big news of India for the third time, an Indian lady becoming the Miss Universe of the world. In that regard, she, Harna Sandhu, 20 year old, has become the Miss Universe. She is the third one after Lara Datta and Sushmita Sen to become the Miss Universe. So that name is definitely something to be noted down, especially from the ALIT examination point of view. A lot of News has also been generated by our former Chief Justice of India, Dr. Ranjan Gogoi. Ranjan Gogoi was when he was the CGI, had developed news, and now he has written a book about himself that is Justice for a Judge. So, we will talk about that and what is the privilege motion on page number nine. But before that, inflation in the Indian economy has now skyrocketed to 4.1. Nine, one. In India, we have a system of the Monetary Policy Committee. The MPC have a responsibility to maintain inflation between 2 to 6 percent with the ideal rate being 4 percent. The inflation has been spiking up again and this is retail inflation. Okay, At the wholesale level, the inflation has been much much higher. Why is inflation or what is inflation? Inflation means a general rise in price level in the economy. A general rise in price level in the economy of commodities. Okay, and in this regard, what we need to know down is why we have a target of inflation. So, in 2016, the government on an entire decade, from 2020 to 2016, we had a lot of fluctuation in terms of inflation. So, the RBI had suggested a dedicated policy to maintain inflation at a stable rate. Across the globe, inflation is rising because of supply constraint demands. There are two things that push inflation. Okay. There is supply side and then there is the demand side. Okay. Two factors that affect inflation in general, supply side and demand side. Supply side is when even if the demand is rising, the supply remains the same. What this does is that it pushes the price of the commodities up. Because of COVID-19 and the bottlenecks that it has created in the economy, the overall system of supply was first disrupted because of lockdowns and different locations and then after it the demand suddenly skyrocketed by the time suppliers could recoup the resources to enable frequent supplies again the supply or the demand has skyrocketed and for most of the commodities so this has put a lot of constraints on supply chains and has created inflation across the globe but in India, there are two commodities that have been rising inflation, which is vegetables and fuel consumption. Those are the two 
with wholesale price inflation of commodities at the highest in the past 40 years. It has never been this high as what the wholesale price level is. Okay, so in that regard, inflation, the remedy to inflation, the mandate of it is with the monetary policy committee. This committee is headed by the RBI governor. Okay. Shakti Kanta Das, who is the current governor, is the head of the MPC. What is the target of MPC? It is to keep inflation in a target range of 2 to 6 with 4% being the ideal. What it means is that why should we have some amount of inflation? Mengai Q is necessary. Mengai is necessary to keep suppliers invested in the market. If there will be no price rise, they have no incentive to produce in the market. If they have no incentive to produce in the market, they will not put in the money. And if they do not put in the money, it is not going to lead to economic growth. Because if they stop, jobs will lose. If jobs lose, people who are dependent on them will lose income. Their demand will fall and it will lead to a spiral. So we need a stable and a healthy amount of inflation. But if we... If inflation rises too much, what it does is, or the problem with that, is it increases the overall well-being. It diminishes the value of money. Inflation at a high level diminishes the value of money. For example, Last month you saved 500 rupees from your fuel expenses. You walked or cycled your way to work to save money or to your school or anywhere, to the playground, whatever. And that 500 rupees you had thought ki in 500 I will be able to buy myself this new subscription of a TV series or a TV show for at least two months. Now that subscription has increased, the price of it has increased for almost 10%. What it has done is that the saving of yours has or its value has diminished because now you need to save much more to actually attain a particular commodity. If you and there is a limit to what people can save, any saving has a limitation. One person cannot save beyond a certain limit. If you cannot do that, then those commodities that were in demand for you, you will stop demanding them, which will lead to a lower spiral in the economy. If most of the things in the economy are beyond the people, their price will go even higher because now the supply of those commodities will reduce Less suppliers will make it, so they will be keep on becoming more and more and more expensive. This is the long-term inflation consequences that happen. And the poor bear the most amount of brunt of the same. Significantly, since the COVID-19 pandemic, we have had very high inflation in the economy. And it has repeatedly been beyond the permissible limit of the Monetary Policy Committee. For example, if you look at this graph, only in the month of January 2021 and April 2021 was inflation anywhere close to its target range. For almost all the time, it has been higher than that. And if inflation for a sustained time period is very high, then it leads to a lot more people becoming poor and poorer by the day. Alright. Then we move on. Apart from this more and less the news is political. The Prime Minister has inaugurated a new corridor for the Kashi Vishwanath. Which is the Kashi Vishwanath corridor. Land was reclaimed around the temple area. To create space for the Kashi Vishwanath temple. 
Kashi Vishwanath Temple was constructed by Ahilya Bai Holkar in the 15th-16th century, queen from the Maratha clan. Marathas had divided in themselves into different family houses such as the Sindhyas and the Holkars. <coughs> so in that regard, Ahilya Bai Holkar in 15th-16th century had constructed the Kashi Vishwanath Temple in the city of Varanasi. Nothing apart from that, everything else is political. Then, notice to CBSC over anti-women question. CBSC, in its board examinations for 10th, had given a passage which was also highlighted by Sonia, president of the Congress party in the Lok Sabha, that this question should be withdrawn. What was this question? This question blamed the independence of women for breakage of the house. That houses in countries of India are breaking because of what the women do in the household. That they should re remain concise to and be obligated to their husbands. This was called out as sexist and considering or treating women as their chattel. Such a thing. So now CBSC has withdrawn the questions and the students will be granted bonus marks. Then is the case for the JJB, Juvenile Justice Board. In India, person or children below the age of 18 who commit crime, okay, they are considered as juveniles. These juveniles have also a criteria of heinous crimes, that is, there are certain ordinary crimes and then there are certain heinous crimes where the juvenile is treated as an adult. In general, a child who is an under trial or remains in <coughs> juvenile justice board or just care systems, they are being denied of their childhood until and unless their cases are solved. So this is about how there is a high pendency of such juvenile cases in the Delhi system. For us, what is important is who is a juvenile? A juvenile is a person from the age of 11 to 80. Okay. Then we move on. Apart from this, on the national news, nothing of note, political news, not much for conversion. <coughs> None of this is important for us. Then the main editorial. The main editorial is a very, very important one for us to understand the world politics as they are happening. The flag highlighted in this editorial is also something which signifies where it is going. It is pegged to the American withdrawal from Afghanistan, a development with a far-reaching impact on global politics. What has happened? The world's largest military, USA, had to go back to its country from the region. They had to fly it and since then they have, for 20 years, they failed to establish control and win this war on terror. The slated aim of 2021 was to establish US and in retaliation of the 9-11 attacks. But the US, very similar to the defeat they faced in Vietnam, where they had to leave at the last. That there is now a perception that US is suffering from a great power fatigue, if not weakness, that big, big powers over time become fatigued by their dominance. And it has happened to countries in the past, the Mughal Empire, by the peak of 200 years or almost 150 years had declined in India. At the peak of its powers, it had 22% of the world GDP's economy. Similarly, the Roman Empire, Ottoman Empire, the, and in recent times, the UK's colonial empire. All these empires have seriously shown lag or fatigue. The US entered the area of unipolar hegemony in 1991 after the disintegration of the USSR. 
with USSR no more from 1991 the world was in a unipolar world order this is now changing with the chinese economy coming almost at par to threaten the position of usa all right in that regard the key aspect is to be seen is can us withstand the chinese onslaught and the key distinction here is that the us in its endeavors in the post 1991 world order has been unable to extend its domination it is a power in retreat in 1979 us was overthrown from iran okay then from 2001 to 2000 16 it failed to control the territory in iraq the coup in iraq after toppling saddam hussein then its adventures in syria to remove bashar al assad in syria have failed it could not even protect its own allies that is the kurds against the turkish turkey being a nato ally it could not even ensure security to its allies in syria war which were the kurds okay this all transpired in 2016 2017 and then is now the withdrawal of 2021 from afghanistan so there has been a series of miscalculation by the us military on top of this in afghanistan it has been founded out that it has been double gamed by the pakistanis a country much much smaller than in size has double gamed the us in regard to the adventure in afghanistan instead of supporting them they had been providing tacit support to the taliban which has claimed victory after the withdrawal of usa then in terms of containing its own adversaries that is russia post 2014 that is after the annexation of crimea by the russians it tried to impose sanctions on the russians but in 2021 the russians are back on the borders of ukraine and nato or usa cannot do anything more than impose sanctions similarly in 2018 it imposed sanctions on iran to make the country agree to a new nuclear deal with usa those efforts have also failed joe biden is now trying really hard to revive the old jcpoa deal that is the chance that us is now trying to make similarly with regard to the events of belarus on the border of belarus and the other european union countries us has been unable to deal with anything on the threat on the eastern flank which is highlighted by the crisis in the baltic sea and the border with belarus again the threat is all that economic sanctions will be imposed but those economic sanctions now that iran has been successfully able to tide through this conversation it has put the challenge on usa similarly in containing the chinese there has been no real effort or no successful mechanism that has been founded out the us has established the quad with india australia and japan but the success of quad is still to be seen on ground so any endeavor that the us has undertaken in this decade has come up short and therefore now it needs to be seen the afghan withdrawal and the downsizing in west asia suggests that america's strategic focus has shifted towards china ideally us would not prefer to get involved in another conflict but 
the inconclusive wars the US fought in recent years and the associated great power fatigue have opened up space for regional rivals who are trying to maximize their influence. What it also says, preparing itself for the next bipolar context or continue as a global policeman for liberal order that is under attack from multiple fronts. What are these different different multiple fronts that the US is facing? US was seen as the country that was the harbinger of democracy in the world. It can no longer do that fight anywhere. It failed in Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. Its experiments in Vietnam, Libya, in Middle Eastern countries have come up all short. So now the US is withdrawing from most regions to focus primarily on the Chinese. But the fact is that if your one of the big reasons for US to win against the USSR was its ideological positioning. If the ideological positioning of USA has become weaker, then the success of USA vis-a-vis -vis China will only be limited. If Then we move on on the left hand side, sanctions and rights. After the end of the summit for democracy, US imposed sanctions on rapid action battalion of Bangladesh. This is very significant, especially because US is close to India, who is close to Bangladesh. Or as we believe they are. Okay, plus this is a very important week. On December 16, we celebrate the 50th anniversary of creation of Bangladesh. So US targeting a paramilitary force of Bangladesh creates major irritant for USA and Bangladesh itself. These have come also out of the blue. No real warning had happened that this was going to be the case. Now, who is the Rapid Action Battalion? The Rapid Action Battalion focus primarily is on human right excesses. Why has sanctions been imposed? For the human right excesses that this organization has mostly carried out. What are these excesses? The excesses are in terms of arrest, removal of people and the RAB is a joint task force founded in 2004, mandate of ensuring internal security, widespread allegations of serious human rights abuse to the extent that they threaten US national security interest. That is the claim made by the US Treasury. What has been the actions? It was responsible for almost more than 600 disappearance, 600 extra judicial killings and torture. So any body that takes a active stance to police its way out to law enforcement or commits human right excesses will be called out eventually. That is what has happened with Rapid Action Battalion. But it is the timing that surprises the most. Now, have such police actions been any successful? What will be these sanctions? These sanctions have also been imposed on officials for actions of in Xinjiang province, citizens of North Korea suspected of engaging in illicit incomes and military officials of Sri Lanka who committed gross violations against ethnic Muslims plus chief ministers of Myanmar who have been ongoing in killing of protesters against the military coup. So all these are very similar ones. However, what is important to be seen is the timeline at which they have been launched and who are they targeted at. Is it purely a principle stand or is it something of a tilt or to give a warning to a country that you are getting too closer to someone who I am not comfortable with. So get your house in order. That is what it seems to be the case. Then on the right hand side, a global gateway to creating links, not dependencies. What is this about? This is about the new European Union investment plan that has been announced by the European Union as a counter to the BRI. 
that global gateway is the plan of the European Union to create <coughs> investment opportunities. One of the key criticism of BRI has been debt trap diplomacy. Debt trap diplomacy is, let's say A gives a loan to B, A knows B's income is only 50 rupees per month. Okay, A gives B 500 rupees and says, you will have to pay back me this money in 6 months. A knows that B will never be able to make the payment. So what does A state? In return, I will take your house or I will now own the assets that you own. So B, who needed some money, has now been caught out because the loan was beyond its limit. This is debt trap. I knew that you will get into the debt trap. You will never be able to pay it back. And yet I extended you the loan. Usually what banks do, they don't extend you the loan if you do not have the ability to pay it back. If you have the ability, only then they extend you the loan. The Chinese government has been providing healthy loans to hefty amounts of loans to countries in Africa, to dictatorship, no background checks, no assurance that how the money will be paid back. Look at Pakistan. Huge investments have been made by the Chinese in Pakistan with awareness that this money was never going to come back. Why? To ensure that the assets that are being created in these countries then become infrastructure assets of the Chinese. So basically, you use your money as a way to dominate the region. Okay, you plant your loans in different, different areas of the world and then try to maximize profits from those areas. This is what the BRI or the Belt and Road Initiative is all about. So European Union realized that they want to do something else. This is also very similar to the G7 plan of build back better. Okay, this is the European Union plan to build back better. So EU, this will not be any government funding, but private support to create investment opportunities between 2021 to 27 through private investors. So there is no real money that is going on. The risk is that this is also then going to give the money to the private players. If someone cannot make the payment of this private investment, at least to a government, you can negotiate your way. To private companies, what you have to do, you have to surrender the value to them at any cost. So this is also, if it is not going to really benefit the people or not, it needs to be seen. For us, what we need to focus on is the name of the policy because the details of it are yet to be really rolled out. Then we move on, home truths on climate change. There is a gap between what the government says on international stage and what it does at home. This is the criticism of the government policies on how it has been doing or a hypocritical stand that the Western world plus the government itself of India has been taken. In the world forum, India has been claiming that we need investment money, we need development money. We need to take so and so steps to ensure benefit. But have we really been doing enough to ensure that we take steps to limit climate change at home? What have we done to phase out coal or phase down coal? How have we actually tried to invest in technologies to make the energy production greener? Those are the criticisms that this editorial points out. Okay. Then on the right hand side, so this is on a criticism side but what we need to remember is the five pledges of Prime Minister at Conference of Parties 26. The big one was by 2070 India will become net zero. Okay, so this is the key one that needs to be remembered. Then on the right hand side principles over profit. Sexual harassment allegations as discussed, okay, 
have been made by Peng Shuai, who is a two-time doubles Grand Slam winner from China against Chinese senior official. In regard to that, the world, the Women's Tennis Association, okay, they took the step to cancel all events in China. That until and unless steps are taken to ensure the well-being of the athletes in the country, from the junior level to the final level, no amount of, no kind of games of the WTA will happen in China. This is now that the country now needs to come clean. Okay, this is something that FIFA has not been able to do or any world body. For example, the World Cup in Qatar has illustrated that worker rights have been violated. People have been made to live in unfair places. They have not been given fair wages and yet the FIFA body or the body that regulates football World Cup have not taken any action against Qatar. This is because FIFA will make a lot of money out of the World Cup in Qatar, has already received a lot of money. So it does not want to antagonize a client. So this is the key distinction that the WTA has taken with sexual harassment complaints, whereas human rights violations of workers and different issues of even corruption related to bid of Qatar for the World Cup have not been dealt with firmly. Then we move on. Stalin's West Side story, this is again political, and that the pace of inoculation has slowly picked up, but way short of the target that we have for the country. Then five Central Asian members will be participating as chief guests for the Republic Day Parade. They will be, four of them are members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and one of them, that is Turkmenistan, is another country that borders Afghanistan. So this is a key symbol that India wants to continue its engagement around the Afghan and the Central Asia. We have not given up. So who are the countries we are inviting? It is Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. All four of them except Turkmenistan are members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization which India joined in 2017. Okay, all of them are members except Turkmenistan. This is also part of India Central Asia Dialogue of 2019. Okay, the key focus is to invite the presidents, so who all will be invited? The president to invite President Kasyam Jomart Toyandev of Kazakhstan, Sadyar Japarov uh, of Kyrgyzstan, Imali Rohman of Tajikistan, Gurgambili Berhandu Madev of Turkmenistan, and Shavkat Mirziyov of Uzbekistan. Okay, this. Now, the two major investment projects of India in this region is the Cha Bahar port and the North-South Transport Corridor. The Cha Bahar port is our gateway to bypass Pakistan and enter into Afghanistan and then go beyond to the Central Asian Republics. So, we will build a sea link to Cha Bahar and then go there. Okay. So those are two major investment projects of India. Those had become or are now threatened because of the Taliban government, which is why we need to take active steps to ensure that we do not lose control or heft in the region. India lays emphasis on unclosed government says promoting open, free, rules-based order rooted in law. The United Nations Convention on Law of the Seas, which is the key law which India is a signatory of, is the law or the rule that confirms a rule-based order for the seas. India has actively always supported a rule-based international world order. What has India supported? A rule-based international 
world order okay this is always been india's stand which needs to be remembered then response plan for crashes was in works advisory issued by ministry of civil aviation how to respond to information of a crash what will be the response team who will be there on the ground all of that needs to be checked now especially because in light of the sad passing away of our first chief of defense staff that is general bipin rawat then in corridor of divine cash registers ring that <clears throat> then moving on trinamool congress move privilege motion against ranjan gogoi former chief justice of india who within 6 months of his retirement took up the position of as a member of the rajya sabha basically a position offered by the government to him as a nominated member a privilege motion has been filed against him in the rajya sabha what when do you move a privilege motion so in a response to a question of his short attendance at the rajya sabha that was asked to him by the ndtv he stated i go to rajya sabha when i feel like i think there is a matter of importance when i speak i am a nominated member i am not governed by any party whip whenever the bell rings for the party members to come that does not bind me i go by my choice i come there by my choice okay i am an independent member of the house he even stated that see <clears throat> i find that the area is dingy it's not safe during covid time so that is also one of the reason i don't go privilege motion or any motion or rules of the house are governed by article 105 of the indian constitution which states that the house has absolute freedom to determine its own rules within this privilege motion is moved when a member does an act unbecoming of the house or the reputation of the house this is what is claimed in the privilege motion which will now be examined by the chairman then supreme court seeks revival of vaccine psus or public sector undertakings that were in charge of vaccine manufacturing those have not been done gujarat compensation figures exceed the official covid death toll 19000 families given it but government lists only 10998 fatalities which shows that almost double the number of people have passed away because of covid 19 as of today the supreme court had taken active steps to ensure that compensation is granted to families who have passed away because of covid 19 and 50000 was listed as a compensation amount the state had received 34678 applicants for the same different newspaper local newspapers including the hindu had also carried out how state governments across the country have not listed all the deaths for covid 19 or a lot of states are actually on the shorter side that they have misquoted or unreported deaths for the covid 19 then in a major step towards deterrence we tested a supersonic missile assisted torpedo system developed by drdo this is it was a textbook launch with the entire trajectory monitored by a tele okay <clears throat> it was launched from a ground missile what is it capable of successfully demonstrated the system has been designed to emphasize anti submarine warfare capabilities far beyond conventional range of the torpedo this missile system stands based stand of torpedo delivery system it is to counter long, or have long range response against submarines or in general against ships using this you can take much more longer actions usually ships are sunk using torpedo attacks but torpedoes have a limited range if you can launch a missile from your ship onto another then and they are able to successfully breach the target then your objective is achieved 
that is what the supersonic missile assisted torpedo system would be intending to do then we move on on the crisis in europe but before we do that let's talk about hanna sandhu the indian women who has won the beauty pageant after 21 years india His last winner at the beauty pageant was in 2000. That was Lara Dutta. Sushmita Sen won it in 1994. So Harna Sandhu, who is from Punjab, has won the 2021 edition of the crown. India now has three winners in total, which is much less than USA, which has the highest number of winners. That is eight. This was the 70th edition of the event and was held in the resort town of Iliad of. israel okay so those are the key facts that we need to remember from miss universe miss universe or these kinds of beauty pageants have now fallen in disrepute because of the idea of body positivity usually these miss universe or such beauty pageants have a set norm of beauty that you are beautiful only if you are a or b or c size but now we have a lot more bodily acceptance body positivity and body imagery now then come back to eu slap sanctions on russian military firm all of this is in response to the crisis brewing on the border of ukraine on one side and russia's military build up on the other there is large scale belief that a russian counter or a russian invasion into ukraine is likely or it is a pressure tactic by russia to get their demands met which is to ensure that ukraine is not a member of nato this is the key demand that vladimir putin has put up to nato to give assurance that ukraine will never become part of nato so in response different military companies of russia have been flagged they will not be able to supply weapons to different different countries which will hurt their trade one of the big industries of russia is weapons manufacturing so if that is suffering then it could be a way to dominate vladimir putin or get him to a table to discuss the issues that are compounding the country then different other countries are now allowing the use of booster doses against omicron variant the big news though here is of hong kong court sentences jimmy lai of 13 years in 13 months in jail inciting participation in tianmen vigil so pro democracy advocates of hong kong jimmy lai he has now been put for jail for 13 months he is also the founder of the newspaper apple daily in the month of april assets of apple daily were frozen in april 2021 and his media organization had been shut down apple daily was the biggest tabloid of hong kong which had been actively critical of the steps of the chinese communist party and for pro democracy movement so in that regard he had to pay with his own freedom now and will be in jail for further 13 months then on the right hand side blinken begins his south asia tour nothing of note for us here this then on the right hand side is the news about the time person of the year elon musk has been identified as the time person of the year for the major news maker of the year in that regard only one indian in 1930 that is mahatma gandhi has been awarded with the title of time magazine's person of the year award only one indian in the history of our country mahatma gandhi is the only person to have been given that then we move on on this economics and sporting side 
in formula 1 supermax reaps the reward for his incredible consistency so max verstappen won on the last lap in his battle against lewis hamilton to win the title though there was a lot of controversy about how the race was regulated so in that regard he won the drivers title while mercedes amg won the constructors title okay this was max verstappen's first formula 1 title lewis hamilton was denied his record 8th world championship okay then we move on apart from this on the sporting side nothing of note so a journalist or an enemy of the us state this is related to julian assange and the charges that he faces what did julian assange do julian assange publicly revealed documents that had been hidden in archives or reports that had not been made public this was part of investigative journalism however so is it investigative journalism or it is a violation of national security wherein you have release documents that were national security sensitive area so in that regard this is the key question what did julian assange reveal he told the world that how us air strikes drone strikes had been kill- killing innocent civilians in iraq and afghanistan the calling out the bogey of the successful war on terror he also revealed the emails of hillary clinton just a week before the election campaign voting days which also is seen as a event that turned the table in favor of donald trump plus he also accessed other military files related to 911 data which is the conversation of different officials to see what was the response of the government in relation to 911 a lot of blushes happened because of this so he has been now in jail in one form or the other since 2012 is someone who founded of organization known wikileaks in 2006 and now in jail since 2012 first in the ecuador embassy then from 2019 onwards in the britain jail since then he his extradition has now been confirmed to the u s and will be tried for his crimes should he be tried is the question that confronts the u s government then the jammu and kashmir delimitation exercise this is the other aspect that is important for us justice ranjana desai is the heading the overall delimitation commission delimitation commission was established on march 6 2020 in terms of the reorganization of the state after ladakh and kargil were removed and make, made a separate union territory there was a need to redraw the boundaries for elections that exercise is being headed by justice ranjana prakash desai now usually delimitation is followed through population percentage basis that if your region's population is a or b the percentage and that is how the size is determined the other aspect is till now in jammu and kashmir reservation for scheduled caste scheduled tribe for election was not granted so which seats will be reserved for which community is also supposed to be determined by the delimitation commission there is a demand that these meetings of the delimitation panel will be a political tool by the government to turn the election in its own favor whenever it happens because in the past two elections a polarized split verdict has turned up that is the jammu region has not voted for traditionally dominant kashmiri parties that is the pdp and the national conference whereas kashmir region has overwhelmingly voted in favor of them which has led to split verdict and a 
almost unexpected alliance between the PDP and the BJP, which was terminated just before the revocation of Article 370. So we need to wait what the panel suggests. Those things are what we wait for. Seeing dystopia in India's democracy. The state's attachment to the procedure of democracy has not been matched by concern for fulfilling life of India. This is in regard to Prime Minister calling that India has rich heritage and world can learn from us on democracy. What has been the ground effect or the ground reality of civil liberties in India? Do we actually provide people with tools to empower themselves? What do we do on a real, real basis is what the question is here. All right. With that, we conclude the analysis for the newspaper. On that point, I want to remind all of you that Unacademy is a free platform where you can access classes of the nature that is interactive in nature. You don't have to consume passive education. You can take active steps for the same. How can you do that? You can do it through our special classes such as the one on our learners app here in these classes you can participate in the class raise your hand and ask a question you will also get notification if you enroll for a particular class plus the moment class gets over you can download the notes related to that lecture and you can watch these classes n number of times anywhere possible plus if you are looking for dedicated preparation for your examination you should subscribe to plus courses of an academy the plus courses provide you all the benefits of classes within a, a dedicated batch with fixed timings of the class to cover the entire syllabus. Plus, you get access to national and sectional mock tests. If you are looking for subscription, students of CLAD 2022 should take a subscription of at least six months and students of CLAD 2023 should take a subscription of 12 months. You can use my code KUSSGK for an additional 10% discount. And the Unacademy uh, is also running two kinds of weekly tests. One is the Unacademy Law Aptitude Test, which will happen on Saturdays. And the weekly T20 test, which happen on a daily basis for 20 minutes. What batch to subscribe for? For CLAD 2024, you should subscribe to Law & Order batch which is your one-stop solution for by NLU alumni. The DU Dream is a badge for students who are already graduate in BA and are looking for a three-year LLB course in the Delhi University. For this, we are beginning a batch on 3rd January and legal fix by NLU alumni for CLAT 2023 aspirants, which begins on December 24. And then a batch known as Emerge, for which begins on December 2022. Okay, which is again for CLAD 2022 aspirants. On that note, if you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you so much. See you all in the next one.